This is the brand new Volkswagen ID Buzz, and it's the coolest van I've seen in years. It's fully electric, and it has cool retro styling from the Volkswagen bus of the 1960s. A year ago, I took you on a tour of the ID Buzz and showed you all of its quirks and features. That video got millions of views, and today I'm going to drive it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And you should, because we've had some great sales lately, like this Audi RS6 Avant that sold for $123,000, this wonderful Roush Mustang that brought $50,000, and this fantastic Mazda 6 wagon that was converted into a Mazda Speed. <laughs> Very cool car sold for $15,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions, great selection, and free listings, check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the ID Buzz. Now, the main purpose of this video is for me to do a driving review of this van because I already did a video about a year ago showing all the quirks and features of a stationary prototype. But before I get behind the wheel, I'm going to give you a general overview of the ID Buzz and I'll show you some of my favorite quirks and features because, well, I just can't resist. So let's start with that overview. Like I said, fully electric Volkswagen van. The styling is obviously reminiscent of the iconic 1960s Volkswagen bus. They did a fantastic job of modernizing it for today's world. Now, the ID Buzz is already on sale in Europe, but it won't come to America until the summer of 24, next summer, a year from now, as a 2025 model. Now, this particular ID Buzz is a European model. It's a short wheelbase version with two-row seating, which we won't get here in North America. The U.S. will only get the long wheelbase version, which comes standard with three-row seating. It's about a foot longer than the European model. Europeans will also get a cargo commercial van version of the ID Buzz with no rear seats, but that too won't make its way to the United States. Now, although Volkswagen has announced a lot of details about the U.S. market ID Buzz, how it's going to look, the long wheelbase, when it's going to come here, they haven't confirmed powertrain details. But since the ID Buzz is based on Volkswagen's small ID4 electric crossover, my assumption is the powertrains will be relatively similar. If that's true, that means you get a base model, two-wheel drive, with about 200 horsepower, which is probably going to be slow. But you will also get an optional 300 horsepower all-wheel drive version, which is probably going to be faster. That's the one that everyone will want. But again, that's not confirmed or even really discussed by Volkswagen just yet. More powertrain details surely on the way in the future. Now, Volkswagen has confirmed that the ID Buzz will offer DC fast charging capabilities, meaning it can charge from 5% to 80% in about 30 minutes, which is pretty good. And again, range hasn't been confirmed, but if we extrapolate based on the ID4, we can imagine a base model with about 200 miles of range and the top version about 270. But again, all that's unconfirmed, pure Doug speculation. We should know more in the coming months. As for pricing, Volkswagen hasn't announced that either, but based on the market position and where it's priced in Europe, I suspect it's going to start in the 40s here in the United States, the somewhere in the $40,000 range, with well-equipped versions probably topping $50,000. And next up, climbing inside the ID Buzz, where there are, as you might imagine, quite a few quirks and features, starting with opening the door where you see a smiley face right there next to the door handle. This is a little cap that's placed on the door. Mechanics will take it off in order to get in there and loosen the door panel and remove it if something breaks. All cars have this, but the ID Buzz has a smiley face to help brighten your day. And things only get even more quirky and interesting from there. The door panel itself has two level storage, which is pretty cool. An upper level and a lower level, so you can really maximize what you stick in the door panel of your ID Buzz. In fact, this van is 
is full of all sorts of clever and quirky storage solutions, the most obvious being the center console. Now you can see the top of the center console is a big storage compartment. That's not all that unusual. Most cars have that. Of course, you can stick stuff there. And you have a movable divider that you can use to kind of move around to keep your stuff from mingling with your other stuff. You could even put the divider far back or far forward to create kind of a cup holder in here. But the cleverest part is you pull the divider out and it's a bottle opener, which is a neat idea. You always have one handy if you have an ID buzz. But that's not even the quirkiest part of the center console. There's a hidden storage compartment in front that pulls out frontwards toward the front of the car and you can stick stuff in there and then close it right up if you want things to be hidden. Another clever little storage compartment in this car. And the coolest part is you can remove it entirely. Press this button in the front and then you can see it lifts up. You can pull the entire center console out of the van in case you'd rather use this center area for something else, a cooler, other storage, whatever. You don't need the center console there if you don't want it. Next up, directly in front of the center console, you have this panel here, which opens up to reveal cup holders. You can open it, push it down, and then your cup holders are in place. And of course, you can stick your drinks there, or if you don't want to see them, you can fold it up and out of the way. Of course, folding up the cup holders also gives you more frontal storage space if you want it up here. Now, directly above the cup holders, you can see a few buttons here. These control the power sliding doors, just like a conventional minivan. This has power sliding doors. Push the button and they open up automatically. That's not all that unusual, but the cool thing here is these buttons are accessible to both front seat people. In some vans, only the driver has access to the sliding door buttons, but here driver or front passenger can press them and open up the back doors. And of course, you can also use these buttons to close them, which maximizes your convenience. Next up, also in this vicinity, the pedals are pretty cool. They have pause and play play buttons on them. Pause, of course, for the brake pedal, play for the accelerator pedal, and that is kind of a cool touch. It's a gimmick, definitely, but they got me. <laughs> anyway, next, moving up from there, you can see to the right of the steering wheel, two USB ports. USB-C's here, where, of course, you can charge your devices. The neat thing in this little cubby is it's also a wireless cell phone charger. Below the ports, this compartment reaches all the way down. You can stick in a phone, and that that's your wireless charger that'll charge your phone while you drive. It's pretty cool. Like a hidden wireless charger doesn't take up any space in the interior and it's out of sight and out of the way. It's a neat idea until of course you park this at the airport and forget your phone in the car and take off without it because you didn't see it. But I do think it's cool. Anyway, speaking of charge ports, here's another interesting idea. Over on the passenger side, the front door, there's a charge port in the door. Instead of sticking it on the dash, dashboard like everybody else. It's here in the door and next to a storage compartment. So you can plug in your phone and stick it right there. Let it charge. You don't have to have it in your lap or dangling around. That's pretty cool placement and it's a clever idea. And speaking of clever storage in this area, directly above the glove box, you have this little storage area. It's open so you can't put stuff there that'll fly around, but it does give you a little bit more interior storage in the ID Buzz. Next up in this interior, let's talk technology, starting with the screen directly behind the steering wheel. You can see it here. It's a little screen that shows all the important stuff. Your speed, your charge percentage and range, your odometer, the gear you're in, all that stuff is on this screen, like most gauge cluster screens. The difference, of course, is this one is tiny and it pops off the steering column. It's kind of cute and it does have a good display. It'll show you what you want to see, but it's not some huge full screen thing that gives all sorts of information like some cars have. That's a drawback, but the benefit is, well, again, it's kind of cute and it gives you all of the essentials. Now, the ID Buzz also has, of course, a center touchscreen, and this is Volkswagen's latest system with the sliding controls for climate and volume. Everybody's been complaining about these, but I don't understand why. They work very easily. You just slide your finger for hotter, colder air, as you can see, driver and passenger side works very intuitively, very responsive, very simple, and volume is in the center. Again, slide your finger 
finger for volume up, volume down. It's all pretty easy to me. Now, some complaints about these sliders have centered around the fact that they didn't light them up, so you can't easily see them at night. But their position is obvious, directly below the screen, and they only do two things, climate temperature and volume, so it's pretty easy. It's easy for me. Some complainers might have trouble, but I think most rational people will have no problem. Now, above the sliders here, you have Volkswagen's latest infotainment system, and it works reasonably well. It's very responsive. It's pretty intuitive. It does everything you'd expect an infotainment system. No real complaints here, except for the fact that it does absorb all climate control functions, meaning you gotta press this Clima button below the screen in order to bring up the climate menu and make any changes. That means all climate control adjustments turn into a two-step process, including just turning on the heated seats. There's no button to press. You got to go into the menu, then turn them on. It just adds a little complication to everything. It's a little bit of an annoyance. And next we move on to the back seat of the ID Buzz, which frankly is just as cool and quirky as the front. Let's start with getting in. Again, power sliding doors. You walk up to the door handle and just pull on it and the door pops out and automatically opens up, as you can see. Again, pretty standard among modern minivans, but still worth pointing out. Now, when you climb inside, you can close the door by pressing a little button on the inside with kind of a door diagram on it. Push that and the door automatically closes itself. Again, fairly standard on modern vans, but also nice to see. Worth pointing out before you get inside, this little ID Buzz diagram on the side of the seat bottom, a cool little Easter egg some people might not notice, but it's nice to see it there. Anyway, get inside. On the inside of the door panel, again, you have a USB charger. Again, a clever position for this. It's right next to your lap where you're using your phone, and it's also next to a storage compartment on the door. So if you're not using your phone, you want to set it down, you have a place to do it. This is a really good idea on both sides, both sides sliding doors in the ID Buzz. It's something other automakers should copy. But beyond the doors, other cool stuff back here. For one, you got a little cell phone pocket on the backs of the front seats, a little spot where you can stick your phone in case you're not charging it in the door and you want to make sure it's somewhere safe. Of course, you also have a regular seat storage pocket, as you can see, pretty standard. But the cool thing here is the tray table. You can pull this out and reveal a fold flat tray table with a little drink cut out for cups. So you can have a drink, have a meal, put a laptop there, do some work while you're riding around on your ID Buzz. I really hope this tray table makes it to the US market model too, because it's pretty cool. And another clever touch on the back of the front center console, this panel here can pop out for a little extra rear seat storage, which is nice to have. Now, one drawback of the ID buzz is the lack of cup holders in the back seat here. I've noticed that aside from that drink cut out in the tray table, there's really not all that much. I guess you could stick a water bottle in the door pocket, but otherwise you don't have the usual litany of cup holders that you see in traditional minivans because parents insist that they need them. Not back here. Again, this is the European model, not the US version. We'll see what happens when they bring this to North America. Maybe we'll get more cup holders. And also on that subject, worth to discussing rear seat room in this van, which is pretty good. It's decent. I have leg room, head room, knee room, but not as much as some larger vans traditionally sold here in North America, like the Toyota Sienna and Honda Odyssey. They seem bigger inside. Now, again, this is the European market ID Buzz with two row seating for five passengers. The North American version will be longer with three row seating standard, but I suspect the second row is going to be the same size in both vans. Vans. The North American model will probably have its extra space devoted entirely to that third row. So this is about what you're going to get. Again, adequate, but not as huge as some traditional North American vans. And next up, we move on to the ID Buzz cargo area, which has accessed this giant power tailgate. You open it up and you can see, well, one interesting item. There's this floor, which is like on top, elevated from the standard cargo floor. 
important. That is a platform that you can get as an option for sleeping. If you install this and then fold down the second row of seats, you got enough space for a bed. If you want to take the ID Buzz camping, you can do that. An original purpose of the old school 60s Volkswagen bus brought to the modern ID Buzz. Pretty cool. And of course, you don't have to get it if you don't want. This is an option, so you could just get the van with the standard floor and get more cargo space instead of this elevated platform. A couple of other items worth noting. For one, the cute little ID Buzz on the side of the cargo area. As you can see, this little diagram looks cool. It's not necessary or practical, but it does add to the smile factor of this van. Also worth pointing out, again, the US van will be longer, as I've said several times, and so you'll get that third row back here, and the cargo area will be configured differently than this version. But this gives you an idea of what to expect. And next up, we move on to this front compartment, and yes, it does open. To get here, pull a latch in the driver footwell, like a normal hood latch to access an engine, and that pops open this compartment to here, and then you can open it right up. And as you can see, some mechanical components in here. Obviously, not an engine, since this is an electric vehicle, but some fluids, some wires, some other stuff. No storage, unfortunately, but this compartment does open, so you can get inside, and it's just kind of cute to pop open this compartment on the ID Buzz. Now, the other interesting thing up front is below this compartment, all the diamonds in the lower part of the bumper grill area. Diamonds basically spanning the entire ID Buzz width. This is actually kind of a theme for this car. You can also see them back here on the rear pillar, some diamonds in an interesting design, and a lot of other places too. The door sill, you can see diamonds when you open the door, the speakers on the doors themselves covered in diamonds. Even the mat in the center console storage area has a diamond theme, though you'll probably never really look at it. It's all throughout this van diamonds. Not exactly sure why, but it is an ID Buzz theme. All right, driving the ID Buzz. I have wanted to drive this car ever since I first saw it, which was a year ago when I filmed the quirks and features. First impression is this interior is so interesting because the windshield is incredibly far forward. You can probably see on the camera, you're so much further than me than you usually are. <laughs> the flat front means that the windshield has to go basically all the way to the front of the van, and the seats are pretty far behind that. So like, cleaning the inside of this windshield, you're going to have to like send a small child up to the dashboard and have him wipe it all down. <laughs> and because the windshield is so far forward like that, the A-pillar is massive, but Volkswagen has avoided that being a problem by putting a window in it. So there's actually a window in front of the front window, the one that rolls down. You have a window between that window and the actual windshield of the van itself itself so that you still have decent visibility. Even in spite of that, you have a little bit more front blind spot in the corners than I was thinking that you might. It'd be nice to get those pillars smaller, but for crash protection and rollover, they probably have to be a certain thickness. You know, you trade one safety component for another. Now, one thing I was interested in with this van is seating position. Why Would you be sitting up high enough that it would feel like a minivan or it would give you a crossover feel? And actually, you do feel kind of like you're in a crossover. Volkswagen has been very careful not to refer to the ID Buzz as a minivan. They don't want people thinking about it like that. And I think the seating position will help further Volkswagen's case. It, it doesn't really feel like a van in here so much as, you know, you're taller and you, you feel a little higher up. Okay, so going to floor it here. Not fast. <laughs> Now, again, this is the European model. In Europe, I don't think they go higher than the 201 horsepower version. It's not really fast. That's not really the point of the van generally. So I think even in the States, don't expect it to be like lightning quick, especially because it's kind of tall and blocky. So it could get a little scary if it was too fast. Um, but hopefully it will end up being faster than this because this is not particularly thrilling or exciting. But that's not the point. The point of this van is not to have fun when you're flooring it driving around. The point of it is to have a good time because it's cool. And I will say, sitting in this interior, it feels like cheeky and fun and like friendly in a way that basically nothing else does. Now, this interior, it's also worth pointing out, feels very light and very open. You feel like you got a lot of space in here, but it also feels like modern and nice. You got a lot of space and it's nice, 
windows everywhere. The mirrors are, they're not big, but they're shaped correctly and you can see a lot. I mean, the mirrors on the sides, the rear view mirror is fairly normal, but again, you can see uh, decently out of it. I mentioned the A pillars blocking the visibility in front, not really the ideal situation, um, but they're not that bad. You'll, you'll get used to that after some time, but I do suspect at some busy intersections it could hide pedestrians. It's also not exactly loud in here. I wouldn't call it too quiet, but it feels you know, fine. Really, I think the story about this van is how cool and how cute and how exciting the retro-ness is. They're finally bringing back the bus. That's the cool thing. If you have some nervousness about getting into a van, you don't want to do that. I have so many friends getting having kids now and, oh, I don't want a van. Well, here's a way to have a van and still be kind of cool. And I also suspect it's going to replace some non-vans, some people who maybe were even sedan buyers and just wanted something more interesting and electric, well, here's a chance to do that. And I like this vehicle and I think it's a neat concept and I'm thrilled they brought it back as well as they have. Frankly, even though it's kind of a niche vehicle, I think it's going to be a big hit. I think it's going to be very popular and definitely very eye-catching, much like the original new Beetle was when it came out in 2000. And so that's the Volkswagen ID Buzz. This van is just plain awesome. It's cool looking, it's fun to drive, the interior is a trip, it's weird and quirky and exciting, and I can't wait for it to go on sale in the United States. And now it's time to give the ID Buzz a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 61 out of 100, which places the ID Buzz way ahead of other minivans. Actually, the daily score is a little lower than rival vans because the ID Buzz doesn't have all the cool minivan features that some others do, like Honda's cabin talk system or the sheer number of cup holders you'll find in most rivals. But the ID Buzz still wins the Doug score big because it's actually fun. Fun to drive, fun to look at, fun to sit inside, fun to be around. Way, way, way more than any other minivan. Now, this year European ID Buzz may have some compromises that the US model does not, so this score could still change for the US version. But even in Euro form, the ID Buzz is a smash hit for people who need a van, giving you most minivan benefits with a lot more cool factor.